Well, all of a sudden, scenery's changed. I've got my back to the wind at the moment, it's rather breezy. Um, have a tr tricky trying to pronounce this one. Uh, filled Apple Rock. And it is beautiful. It's uh, South Australia's answer to Wave Rock. And you can see over here on my right hand side, some of the, the wave type um, formations. I could turn around a bit more, but it's gonna get blasted by the wind. There's another lot there along the side. So uh, yeah, pretty wicked little spot. I haven't even started climbing the hill yet. Coming up in the background there from me is the, um, I think they pronounce it Gower Ranges or Gora Ranges. And uh, judging by the amount of uh, four wheel drives and caravans and things, there's a national park up there and uh, seems to be quite a popular place to go and visit. But this is a great little spot. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a donation camp, so uh, we're gonna stay here for a night or two and uh, enjoy um, some beautiful uh, country hospitality here, thanks to the farmer allowing us to be on a, a place as beautiful as this. So anyway, I'll start walking up the hill and have a look at the top. It's gonna be great. Okay, we've got day two of our uh, little uh, trip here to uh, Phil Dapper Rock and uh, just had to point out this, uh, this wave structure. That's why they call uh, this is the, the wave of South Australia. So she's a pretty awesome structure, a natural phenomenon. You can see how it goes all the way around here. Now the, um, the water around a large portion of this is all ducted from the uh, the wave on these little mini um, what do you call it, like curving and uh, it's then sort of ducted in a direction of a very large um, underground tank and uh, we went there this morning on a walk and uh, it was pretty pretty neat to see and then uh, that was I think in the old days obviously used for some of the pastures and things not too sure what it's used for um, these days it didn't look very full but um, it may be due to a bit of the lack of water around the place. But I uh, notice there's a lot of uh, revegetation going on. There's uh, some school groups that are involved with um, some of the replanting. Phil Dapper Rock, this large granite outcrop or a dome, is an exposed part of a granite pluton. It sounds like something out of a super, Superman movie, astronomical, which has intruded the crust, crustal rocks at a great depth, I reckon five kilometers, about uh, 1,500 million years ago. So the rock shows joining in a number of directions which is contributing to the weather, weathering in its current shape. 
Um, the interesting thing to point out with the wave is um, the wave shape or the flared slope was caused by moist soil in contact with the rock causing granite to weather inwards. So as the soil level lowered with more granite was exposed, the weathering rock material was removed leaving a concave surface or e.g. wave rock. So uh, there we have it in a bit of a nutshell, pretty cool. Um, also some um, fantastic wildlife, some kangaroos and bits and pieces around, especially on dusk or early morning. So uh, a really neat spot to come and visit. And uh, one of two or three that we can we can see, hopefully uh, we'll take another couple off the list and uh, sort of compile which one's the best. But uh, when you've got a, a beautiful spot like this, it's opened up, the wind's died away nicely. Yesterday was an absolutely howler, but uh, yeah, pretty, pretty awesome spot here. Got some nice little rocks. It's just incredible. You can just see the the, the smooth nature of all these rocks, and then you go like, oh, "Hang on, how come these guys are still hanging in there?" Incredible. Anyway, we'll go and enjoy our last evening, and uh, work out where we're going to go to next. Stone. 